Hello everyone, I am Dr. Gaurav Dekha. I'm a transpersonal regression therapist, a family constellation facilitator, and a trauma resolution expert. Today, I'm going to talk about guilt. So what exactly is guilt? Is guilt an emotion? Is guilt a concept? A lot of us feel that guilt is truly an emotion, but it's not an emotion. Guilt is a concept. And guilt is a concept because there is a concept of right and wrong. We come from an evolutionary sense of mind where everything has been perceived in polarities. There is right and wrong. There is good and bad. There is long and short. There is light and dark. All of these polarities exist as a result of being on this planet Earth, right? As a result of right and wrong, good and bad, there is also a compass that we have, an inner compass that we call as the personal conscience. Now this personal conscience decides what is right for us, what is wrong for us. And whenever we do something that is beyond what has been decided as right, that is beyond what has been decided as wrong, is what we feel guilty. But this feeling is an inherited feeling. And that's why it's a concept. Because first came the idea of right and wrong. Then came the idea of guilt. But who decides what is right and who decides what is wrong? If we go back to times which we have lived previously, to our ancestral times, we realize that uh, we were not made to exist as individuals. We always existed in groups. Isn't that so? Animals exist in group. They have in herds. Cows are in herds. Fish are in schools, right? Birds fly in flock. Isn't that so? And whenever someone ventures out of that group, the first feeling is the feeling of anxiety. There's the feeling of fear a feeling that I may be lost. And if I'm lost, my survival might be at stake. As a result of which, there is an inherent belongingness to the group. Every time you go out of your group, every time you go out of your collective, this is what you feel, that your survival might be at stake. You may not be accepted. You may not be approved. You may be lost as a result of which there will be a tendency to come back to the group. And the binding factor, the factor that binds you and brings you back to the group is guilt because it's your group. It's your culture. It's your family that decides the boundaries of right and wrong. So in certain families, when people are not allowed to be married to certain tribes, certain groups, certain race, and when they do it, there is always an inherent fear of ostracization. They may be asked to leave, to move out, you know. When there is a person who has a different sexuality and orientation from what the group demands, that's what they feel. They feel fear to express that, to live that, because that might lead to their exclusion. When people make educational choices, choices in jobs, and there is no entrepreneur in the family, but you decide to be a businessman, your family might not approve of it because that falls in the boundary of right and wrong for the family. That's not what the family believes in. Your family perhaps doesn't believe that you would be able to be successful in this line simply because there are no businessmen in the family. The family believes that as a person of alternate sexuality, you may bring shame to the family and the family excludes you as well as there is inherent fear of not being tied to the family. There will always be fear 
of loving someone, marrying someone from a different family, from a different group, not only because it's going to bring some kind of name to the family, but also because that has never happened in the family. The family does not approve of it, right? There is a tribe in Africa called the Maasai tribe. And people from the Maasai tribe greet each other by uh, spitting on each other's nose, right? Uh, for us or for someone else, it could be a strange form of culture. It could be a strange form of greeting, right? For other people, it may bring even anger or disgust or frustration. But for the Maasai tribe, it's a form of greeting. There is warmth, there is affection, there is love in that action, right? So the conscience which regulates what is right and what is wrong differs from culture to culture, from groups to groups, from families to families. And then the guilt that binds us to these families is so unconscious, so invisible, so much a part of this personal conscience that we don't even know that this is what is governing our actions in day-to-day -day life, right? That this is governing our fear. If there are no people in the family who have existed as a businessman and have ever made one million dollars, you will be scared to make that decision and to even dream of one million dollars because it will not only be not a part of your family belief, but also by doing that, by being more successful than the people who do not believe in being businessmen, by being more courageous, by being more, uh, by achieving more, you would end up unconsciously being disloyal to them, right? So when our mother is ill and she's sick, and we had to take care of her throughout our life. We deny ourselves a good life, a fulfilling life, a complete life, a whole life, because if we end up living a good life, then maybe unconsciously, we may betray our mother because she was ill. And it, it's guilt, it's the guilt that's the price we pay for being with mom, for not allowing us a good life. It's like saying, mom, I feel guilty of having a good life because you went through such a difficult life. So therefore, I will also deny myself a good life, right? If dad left at the age of 45 and mom and dad got divorced and we are in a happy marriage with a beautiful child, and then we reach somewhere around 45. And suddenly we start feeling that we are no longer connected to our partner, no longer connected to our wife. We don't feel connection to our child. And there is an inherent tendency to withdraw from the marriage. What exactly is happening there? Not only are you following your father, but also unconsciously telling your father, dad, I feel so guilty to allow myself a complete life with my wife and with my child because you did not do that and you had to let go of me and our mother. So therefore, I'm also going to do that. Otherwise, it makes me feel guilty. And this guilt also works intergenerationally. Think about diabetes. Think about cancer. Think about autoimmune diseases. People not only inherit that because of their genetics, but also there is a strong sense of loyalty as a result of guilt towards all the people who may have suffered. So if grandmother was in an institution and she went through hallucinations and schizophrenia, when we reach, let's say, 51 and we reach grandmother's age, when she had developed the same symptoms, we start seeing people, we start hearing voices, and then we don't realize why it's happening to us. Someone might just say that, oh, it's genetic because it's, it was there in your generational line. But in, a, in integrated psychotherapy and holistic work, 
we look at it in the form of a loyalty. You feel guilty to allow yourself a good emotionally, mentally balanced life. Your unconscious is telling your grandmother, grandmom, you suffered, you went to an institution. I will also do that. I will go through this because otherwise I'm going to feel guilty. So guilt operates at various levels. Guilt operates at the level of our parents, at the level of our intergenerational traumas, at the level of uh, our entire family. But we don't realize that we are actually functioning out of guilt. In reality, guilt is the language of belonging. It is by guilt that we bind to our families. It is by guilt that we become alike them. If we are somehow not alike them, then there is a tendency of us being lost, which comes from our evolutionary memory. When the animal gets lost from the herd, there is a danger of this animal being killed, being hurt. There might be predator waiting. And that's the memory we inherit as well, that if we move out of our group, of our family, we may end up losing our life. We may end up losing the love of our mother. We may end up losing the love of our father. We may end up losing validation. We may end up losing approval. These are the things that binds us to the family. But then this can also become unhealthy. As you may see, people get stuck in financial patterns because out of guilt, they keep repeating the financial traumas, the poverty consciousness of all their ancestors, including their father. People keep repeating diseases in their body without knowing, of course, out of guilt once again. People keep repeating dysfunctional, intimate, romantic relationships, relationships with their spouses, again, out of guilt because people behind them, their mom and dad or their grandparents did not get to live a full, complete, connected, bonded, intimate life, right? We keep repeating these patterns without even knowing. What is the force that makes us repeat these patterns again and again in life? You may have seen people who end up falling in love with alcoholic abusers again and again, but they still don't give it up. You know, you may see people um, attracting unavailable partners again and again, but they don't give it up. You may see people attracting jobs where they are not valued, not appreciated, not given proper salary, but again, they don't give it up. Where do these patterns come from? These patterns come from our intergenerational line, our family, because it is our inherent guilt that binds us to them. And I'm not saying that give up the guilt. What I'm saying is there is a way to discover the root of this guilt. There is a way to find out where do we carry it from. There is a way to visibly see and acknowledge the different traumas that your mom and dad went through or your grandfather and grandmother went through. And from there you have inherited and today you bind to it via your guilt. And when we discover this, when we discover this in healing, in therapy, we are not only just able to let go, but also embrace these stories that we had not paid attention to. And these stories at the end become our resources. They become our skill set. They become our potential. And that's what motivates us and pushes us towards a fuller and more complete life. Think about your mom. By taking on her misery, would you satisfy your mom is that what she would want you to go through by taking on your father's financial strains is that how you honor him if he comes to know will he feel good think about it think about your great grandmother who went through mental instability and she lost um, her life in an institution is that what she would want you to go through when you go through all those sufferings in your body and in your head and in your in your soul think about that uncle who never married and could not express his sexuality and orientation today when you do not express and when you do not fight for love is that what he would want out of you think about it 
they would never want you to do that. They would want you to be the true, authentic self and achieve, express, be everything that they could not. And this is where we convert guilt, transform guilt to gratitude. And we do this by a process called family constellation. If you would want to know more about how we do family constellation, how we bring up these different uh, parts of us, different intergenerational traumas and see them, discover them, and finally we integrate them. If you want to know more about that, you must visit my Instagram profile at Dr. Gaurav Deka. That is where I have several IGTV videos where I talk about family constellation. So in order for you to be able to discover these different intergenerational traumas from where you bind via your guilt, you can explore the method of family constellation. In family constellation, we bring up all these different parts of us. We discover our guilt. We discover our intergenerational traumas. We discover the sadness of our mom. We discover the disappointments of our dad. We discover the various patterns you get stuck but you cannot get out of. And all of these can be resolved via family constellation. And if you're watching this, please know that on 23rd, 24th, and 25th October 2021, I will be hosting an offline family constellation healing program. All the details about that program are enlisted on my Instagram profile. You may visit that and figure it out. And I'm just letting you know this is an offline program happening in Delhi. And I invite all of you. And I look forward to seeing each one of you there. We together will find out all the different intergenerational traumas that you carry in your body, in every cell, in every gene and we extract it out and finally let you live a more fuller, a freer, a wholesome life. Thank you so much.